Uh, so this has been a 10 week project working with the Horbury Senior Citizens Support Group. Uh, we've been looking at different methods of storytelling, so working from autobiography but also the group really enjoyed created storytelling so we've used a couple of different methods for approaching creative storytelling using um, photographs that we've brought in or using a variety of different objects but also some of the group have brought in objects from their own lives and photographs from their past and they've used that as a way of telling us a story about themselves. My name is Josie and I live in Wakefield and this is the big field, it's a big square field. Uh, I got involved with this project through Passport to Theatre and uh, I was, they came to see me and asked me if I'd like to join the workshop, which I said yes I would like to join the workshop along with the rest of the group and I also promised to get them 15 people to work with us. Hopefully those 15 people kept coming every, every week it's been a very, very interesting project and I've enjoyed every minute of it. My name is Neville Bartat from Huddersfield and this is the story of my camel, my fondest, earliest memories of my granny who sat in a rocking chair with me curled in her lap and she used to rock and sing me to sleep and every time on the sideboard was camel looking at me. And eventually, over the years, Granny died. And then my aunt took over Camel. And she was a jolly person with a jolly family who I visited often. And always, on her sideboard, looking at me, was Camel. Then, it was the turn of my mum to have Camel. And every time I visited once more, Camel was looking at me. Now, Camel is in my kitchen on the cupboard and he looks down at me and I look up at him and remember a loving family, parts of my life and I also ponder who Camel will be looking at next. I'm Blanche from Birmingham and I'm just going to have a little word and tell you what sort of a life I had as a child because I was brought up on the barges in the Grand Union that, that is now but was then being built as one and my father was a, a man that worked on the barges and took trafficked stuff from one place to another from Worcester to Evesham and all those sort of places and worked on the barges full time. And in between, we sort of all man managed to get together and we led a very nice life, but a very poor life. And the people on the farms at the side of the locks used to come down and leave food in boxes. And you just helped yourself to what you wanted. You didn't take too much and you left some for other people, which unfortunately I don't think they do today. But there again, that was then. And then my father used to work on the barge actually doing the trafficking. But every now and then when there was a short gap of being uh, taken off or loading up, they used to go and work on the uh, piling up at the side of the canal and they called that navvying. And they used to do that for perhaps two or three hours at a time just for that bit of extra money. And when he was once doing that, he got killed. So, of course, we had to come off the barges. My mother couldn't manage on her own with all the girls. But his friend, who we'd been friends with, I gather, for years, moved in and said, no, if you, you, now you've got to move, you've no money, and the kids will have to go into the poor house. So they said, well, the workhouse isn't the place for kids, so I'll marry you and I'll take over where he left off and I'll bring the kiddies up as my own, which he did. They didn't live together as man and wife, but they lived together to do this thing. And they sort of worked on and worked on. And then after a time, when we all started to grow up, we got this house in, in Birmingham, but it was right in the centre of where it was very, very poor. And the bigger ones used to go, you know, straight home from school when they'd had these free meals. But I always went to the church with the cannon because I was so tiny that I used to get pushed around and he used to say well you come and help my housekeeper and we'll clean up all the uh, the things in the church and keep them nice and then after a time I used to go and sit by his side and listen to his stories and he'd help me to read and then one day he said well 
Christmas is coming near now, so how about what you're going to ask for? So I said, well, I've been asking for it. I said, and Jesus just hasn't heard me. And he said, well, what are you asking for? I said, some of those posh things that the posh girls use instead of paper, pair of handkerchiefs. So he said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go into the church and we'll ask Jesus together. So we went into the church and I stood on the pew and he stood at the side. He said, right, we're going to shout as loud as we can and I promise you we will hear you. So we both stood there and shouted, please, Jesus, send us some of these, please. <laughs> and then when Christmas came and we all got your little gift from under the tree, I got this box of hanging keys with a little pretty flower in the corner and a bee on it for Blanche. And, uh, but I couldn't use them, and I've still got them to this day, still in the box, and still as they were. I slept with them under my pillow. Over the ten weeks, we've introduced a number of different game playing techniques, and the group are able to share a couple of them now. One of the games is Two Truths, One Lie, where the group have to tell, well, the individuals have to tell the group about three things about themselves. Two of them are true and one of them is made up and the group use that as a way of um, creatively making things up using their imagination but also as a way of being a little bit nosy about each other. I used to be a childminder. I love rugby league and I hate tea. Now you've got to guess which is the lie. I think it's tea. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> It is a definite lie. My name is William. I also box for the school. I play cricket for Arbury Bridge and at Crown Green Bowling. Now then, what do we think, Kath? Boxing. You do boxing at school. Boxing. Do you think that's the truth or the lie? I think it's a lie. I think it's the crown ball, the bottom one. Bottom? Yeah. Hello, my name's Kath and I've been rafting down Colorado River. I've been on the, in the desert on a camel, but I ate chocolate. Which is the lie? Um, I think you're lying, Kath, that you love your chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. James Bond film ever. I like to do Bond films ever. Ever. Number three, I used to go out with Daniel Craig. I used to go out with Daniel Craig. <laughs> uh, and which is the truth? Oh, which is the lie? Uh, the first one's a lie. Oh, the third one's a lie. Uh, Dan, you, you didn't go out with Daniel Craig. I did, did you? Ten and the twelve. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't no idea though. I have, honestly, because somebody took me to see me. Okay. So it's all true. It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> They're all true. I'd like this to be my tribute to the NHS. When I was born, I was born with problems. And at six weeks old, I was taken into hospital, um, into Kirby Moorside, which is in the North Yorkshire. And I live in the West Riding of Yorkshire, or I did live in the West Riding of Yorkshire. I had problems with my hips and my palate, and uh, it was a 18 month process that they had to develop, that they developed from people like myself with the hip problem and bone problems. Mum could only come and see me at least once a month because it was an isolation hospital. And during that uh, first few months, there was big developments, and from being cast in a cast up to the waist, it gradually became less and less, and I did get the movement, and also I was taught how to speak, uh, because they did my palate at the same time. As I grew older and eventually came home, I was nearly two and a half, three years old, and... Uh, Walking about, but still with a very, very bad limp. And my brother 
who used to ride a bike, who was seven years older than I, uh, Dad made him a... Um, oh, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. Uh, it made the trolley to go on the front of the bike, to which Colin used to take me for rides on the bike, which of course I enjoyed very much. As I got a little stronger and was able to go on holiday with the family, I was walking a lot better by this time and also talking. And uh, by, the, by five years old, I was quite a normal child by this time and enjoying holidays with my uh, mum and dad and family and brothers and, sorry, and my cousins. This tribute goes a long way in my memory because I, I really did think a lot about what had, what had been told to me about what, what had happened to me at birth. And uh, I would like to just say a great big thank you to the NHS and I always tell people that the NHS was actually uh, developed for me because as far as I can, I'm aware it was developed in, or should I say it proceeded in January 47, I arrived in April 47 and I was one of the first to be uh, dealt with in this way, um, with this particular procedure. And I, I've lived quite a normal life since then, but now I'm at the age of 70 and still ongoing with hip operations. And it's quite possible that I may have to have another one, which would be my fault. And again, I would give the NHS my last penny because I am so grateful to them. And mum and dad, of course, for realising the situation. Thank you very much. Uh, our names are Nora and Frank, and we were both born in Wakefield. And uh, Nora worked at the West Yorkshire Printing Company, and uh, I worked at the post office. In 1974, we moved to Scarborough and bought a guest house, and uh, enjoyed running it for 14 years. Meeting lots of nice people, especially the man who wet the bed and blamed a leak in the ceiling <laughs> at did. three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And the lady, the elderly lady, who turned up with her daughter to stay, and the daughter brought a packet of prunes and several back packets of laxatives, <laughs> and uh, they disappeared or came to tell us in midweek they were going home because her mother had diarrhoea. <laughs> <laughs> We then uh, had we then took a break from the business when Nora worked in the Bupa Hospital, and I sold tickets for the boats on Pease Holmes Park in Scarborough. We then bought the Lincoln Hotel, our second business venture, uh, which is in the picture which we brought with us to show you the the bar of the Lincoln Hotel. We ran that for six years without any really memorable incidents to tell you about. Uh, during this period, we did up the hotel. We installed several en suites and televisions in the rooms and modernised it. Uh, after six years, we sold that up and retired. Uh, during the retirement we had, then Nora worked in the Vup Hospital. She was chairman of Scarborough Flower Club, which took up a lot of her time. Okay. And they, we then retired back to Wakefield, our hometown, and joined the Senior Citizen Support Group, which is how we came to be involved in this project. And uh, now we're at today, so that's it. End of story. <laughs> Not end of our lives, but end of, end story, of story so far. And that's it. One of the other techniques that we've used is storytelling from an object. So Jenny and I have brought in objects and the group have had to create a history for them. This extravagant necklace has been passed down through the Windsor family. It is made up of Whitby jet with diamonds, which were added later on. An antiques roadshow jewellery expert recognised the diamonds as coming from the Hatton Garden robbery. The robbers thought it was a good place to hide the diamonds and had got it, a criminal jeweller to add them to the necklace later on. Part two. Mm. 
They never thought the diamonds would be discovered as they thought this was a good place to hide them. But they were distraught when the antique valuer realised where they came from. Overcome with guilt, they decided not to sell it, but to donate it to charity, as it seemed the only way for them not to be recognised as the descendants of their criminal, not royal, ancestors. That's it. <laughs> Is that a true story? No. <laughs> 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 that shows it's a good story, yeah. Lady oh, well, My name's Gladys Hope, and my friend name is... What are they call you? Brenda Clark. My name is Gladys Hall. My name is Brenda Clark. And we are friends. And one day, it was a nice day, so we decided to go for a walk. And we caught for a, a grandchild. And it was a little boy, and he insisted on taking his metal detector with him. So, of course, we went down the fields looking around things. And we didn't think we'd find anything, we just did it to suit him. And we came across, he came across this patch. And when we dug it up, it was just like an old lump of soil. Took it home, and what was there when we cleaned it up was this bottle. And we were right surprised when we saw the silver shining as we were doing it. We thought it was so unusual when we when we did pick it up and eventually got it cleaned up because it were all encrusted. So we did clean it up and we took it to the decided to take the, to the valuer. He he did say that it was quite a good find. And we thought it was a 19th century. So eventually we did take it to a valuer, and he did value around £180. So we decided to take it then to the um, auction. When we took it to the auction, the chap did say that it would be worth £180, if not more, and put a reserve on of £80. Eventually it did go to auction. And we did get the price of £190. But by the time we'd taken the tax, or the VAT on the commission, it didn't turn out to be very much. That's it. <laughs> So one thing we've been doing with the group is promoting healthy movement. So we start every session with a bit of a gentle warm up. Um, so getting the body moving, um, a few stretches and it just really wakes up the body and um, the mind as well in the group we really sort of get into grips with the fact that the mind and body are connected and that if you wake um, those muscles up then the brain wakes up as well. Um, We've been confidence building as well, so um, making sure that the group are comfortable sharing with each other, um, speaking in front of each other. A lot of the group didn't know um, each other's names at the beginning, but now they all do, and they're just happy to talk to each other and share more now. And another thing we've been focusing on is talking and listening. So we've been doing a lot of pair work as well, um, and just making sure that the group can not only share their own stories and memories but also listen to each other's as well and repeat those back to the group and you know introduce each other really. Um, we've been doing an exercise called clap narration where we start with either a photo or an object and um, one person starts off the story it can go in any direction they want and then when someone else feels that they want to take over they clap and they take over the narration and um, we've got some really great stories from that and it's just really great to see the group using their imaginations and just really being creative. <laughs> <laughs>